Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name's Ed, your friendly neighborhood junior doctor. And today we are gonna be breaking down another episode of Scrubs. We've done a bunch already on the channel. We're gonna go back to one of the early episodes. This is season one, episode two called My Mentor. And stick around to the end because I'll give this a realistic rating out of 10. And yet just after two weeks, all the little things that scared me at first are like second nature. Catheters, chest tubes, IVs, everything has started to click. Roll. Definitely something I can relate to. I remember at med school learning to do IVs, like sticking in cannulas. I used to get really caught up in my own head. I thought there was a really big pressure on me to be able to get the cannula in, but you realize over time there's a whole team and it actually doesn't matter who does it as long as somebody gets it done. But being confident putting in a chest tube after a few weeks, that's pretty good going. Even now, after a few years, I would need someone to help me with that. Elliot here, giving the needle a little flick. You've probably seen that a few times. That's what she said. <laughs> Once you draw up something in the needle, there's sometimes air within the syringe, so you flick it to get the air bubbles up to the top because you don't want to be injecting that into the patient. <laughs> this uh, defibrillating is not up to the standard of accuracy <laughs> that Scrubs usually gives you. I mean, there's multiple things wrong, but the biggest thing was the pads weren't in the right place. So if we look back here, here the pads are very central in the chest, but actually you want the current to go through the heart. So you should have one on the right side of the chest. So that's not in a bad position, but then round under the armpit. We actually don't use paddles a lot anymore, but clearly this would have been accurate for the time. Nowadays we have sticky pads on, but there's multiple other things wrong. Clearly in a cardiac arrest, the patient's not gonna be breathing, so you need someone ventilating them. But I don't think this scene is here to be particularly accurate. It's more like to give JD some uh, good sounds to jam along to. Turk here doing a abdominal examination. Patient's arms should be uh, by the side of them. This helps to relax the tummy muscles so you can feel better. And we usually palpate the abdomen to see where the pain is because that gives us an idea of what could be going on. But this particular percussing here actually is to determine whether it's air or fluid. So normally if the abdomen is distended, we need to figure out why it's distended. And by hitting on it, if it's a nice resonant sound, that's probably gas. Or if it's a dull sound, it's probably fluid. <laughs> Are you? Because if you have time to listen to music, then I assume you have time to finish your paperwork. <laughs> yeah, I I haven't actually seen any of the medical staff wearing headphones before, but I have worked with a few porters and domestic staff that I've seen some AirPods in. Probably not allowed because there's various alarms and it's kind of unprofessional, but I have seen it, particularly on a night shift. And Dr. Cox, we've really connected. I'm kind of like his protege. I need to see his chart, talk yeah, screen, copied blood. and highlighted. Unfortunately, Radar, I'm fresh out of gold stars. Up to low bar pneumonia at 31. How much does this guy smoke? I don't know. I think JD is showing here what you kind of need to do as a junior. Your first two years in the UK are called foundation years and you end up doing six jobs over those two years, so rotating every four months. And you're not only learning a completely different specialty, you're also learning to work with different consultants and they have different ways of working. Each consultant would want things delivered and presented in their own unique way. And, you know, they're not gonna adapt to you. You have to adapt to the way that they want it. And so JD's doing a good job here. And a low burn pneumonia is an infection of the air sacs of the lung. So the furthest part of the lung where gas exchange happens. And it's often called low burn pneumonia because your lung has three lobes on the right and two lobes on the left. And because the infection happens on the edge, it tends to spread out and only affect one lobe. Hence the term low burn pneumonia. How many packs a day, genius? Half a pack. Oh, I'm sorry. I phrased the question wrong. How many packs a day, really? 11. Now you don't know where I'm coming from. <whistles> Two or three packs. Well, let's hear. Yeah, asking people how much they smoke. Yeah, you really need to ask the question the right way. For example, you might say to someone, do they smoke? And they might legitimately say no, but then have only given up a week ago and smoked 20 years. Now. I typically go with is, have you ever smoked? 
and then say how many and for how long for and that gives you an idea of really what the lung damage and other damage to the rest of the body might be. To communicate in a common language, we often use the phrase pack years in medicine. So that assumes someone smokes one pack a day, so 20 cigarettes for a whole year, that would be one pack year. So if this chap had smoked for 10 years and he's on what, two packs a day, that would be 20 pack years. I ordered blood cultures and a high resolution CT. Well, what are you looking for? Cancer. When you say the word cancer, every person reacts the same way. Excellent. No. Okay, I wouldn't necessarily jump to cancer in this chat. Smoking a lot of cigarettes obviously predisposes you to cancer, but he's still pretty young to get cancer, even if he is a smoker. More than likely, he has just got a lobe and pneumonia, so a lung infection. What's actually most likely to happen in this scenario is the patient comes in with an effusion so fluid that's collecting at the bottom of the lung which can be caused by infection and can be caused by malignancy so in that case we might think it's an infection but we also need to rule out a cancer so that might actually be the kind of underlying story here but there isn't enough time in the episode to talk about all that uh, will ct results back no cancer so uh what should i tell them yeah so i guess we Ended up revisiting some realism here. It wasn't ever likely, in my opinion, to be cancer. You're a great patient. I like you enough to hope I never see you again. But I promise you, if you keep smoking, you'll be back here. I bet my own life on that. Absolutely right, JD. And often, when, when patients come into hospital like this, you know, not just for lung problems, but for heart problems, and they smoke, it's... A really good time to remind them and encourage them to consider quitting because of the wide-ranging effects COPD so lung damage lung cancers as we know cardiovascular problems like heart attacks and strokes causes all manner of cancers not just lung cancers and fertility problems too and the reality is you're just paying vast amounts of money to kill yourself but I also know it's extremely difficult so you have to be sensitive to the conversation, not come across as preachy. Because it's easy to lose the sympathy if people have contributed to the problem themselves. So smoke many years and developed a complication. But actually, if you put that in your patient's shoes, that is going to be a very hard thing to deal with, to know that you've done this to yourself. A lot of shame can come with that, maybe some embarrassment. So you have to be extremely sensitive. Dr. Cox, about Will. Not now. I have a 10-minute break and my soap is on. Hey, uh, Skeech, if you do go ahead and change the channels, I swear I'll suture your hands together. I've actually been in the staff room before where there's been Holby City, so a hospital drama on TV and everyone's watching it. And it's kind of like this video. It's uh, but multiple people reacting live to the madness <laughs> and the inaccuracies of the show. It turns out we can't save people from themselves, newbie. We just treat them. You know, treat that kid with a respiratory problem, and when he comes back with cancer, go ahead and treat that too. Well, thanks for the pick-me-up. Hey. That is pretty good advice. This is one of the things I do really struggle with, is when patients don't take the responsibility themselves for their health, and you feel like you're doing, you're almost being more responsible on their behalf than they are, which is kind of a weird thing because it's their health, right? And there's lots of different reasons why patients might do that. They might have had some really challenging and difficult things in their lives. But what people need is support over a long amount of time and the healthcare system at the moment is just not set up to do that. There's no money or resources to spend the time to really help these people. And if you decide to take that responsibility on individually, it's just gonna burn you out like what Dr. Cox has given the advice to JD here. And reality, what does that mean? Exactly what he says. Patients come in time and time again with the same issues. Smokers, drinkers, druggies, fatties, whatever. All I'm saying is that if you keep living and dying on whether or not a person changes, well, you're not gonna make it as a doctor. So there you go, another brilliant episode of Scrubs. And what it always does so well is 
weaving the medical science, which is kind of easy to do because you just read a textbook, but it's with the actual stories and the feelings that you go through, which it always nails. It's so well done. So giving this a realism rating, it's pretty solid. There are a couple things that didn't quite strike a chord with me, but I'm gonna give this one an eight out of 10, just so there's some room to go in future episodes. The things that let it down was really jumping straight to cancer in a young patient that's coming with infection. And my WTF moment was definitely Dr. Cox using that defibrillator at the beginning. I know it was supposed to be a joke, but still, it wasn't very realistic. So I hope you've enjoyed my breakdown. Also, you might have noticed the breakdown's a little bit different. I'm trying to be able to do more of them. So I'm trying more of a live recording type setup rather than spending hours editing. So it might be a bit of adjustment, but hopefully it's good enough in the meantime. And so I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a like and consider subscribing. Thanks again for all the continued support on the channel. I hope you're all well and I'll be back soon.